Hey guys, today we are going to talk about kind of two different business models and how to be smarter with your money. Now, again, I will say this for the people in the peanut gallery. It is not easy running a game store in today's economy because or even running a, let's say, your own individual store. You run it from home. You order some products. Um, when you run a any company, employees are a massive expense, but even if you don't have employees, you are like Argos Anonymous, for instance. He seems to be running his own little meta zoo shop from online. He sells on eBay, he sells on his uh, Patreon, his email subscriber list. Uh, he's got his own promo cards and so on, and he was most heavily meta zoo. And this is the difference in Rudy. Rudy did MetaZoo, Flesh and Blood, Sorcery, Weiss, Pokemon. He's done, um, obviously, Magic the Gathering, right? Uh, he's done other games like, uh, what what's that game called? Th there was like a bunch of other Argent Saga. There was a bunch of like other games he's promoted that he's deleted videos of. And he's diversified, so he didn't put all his eggs in one basket. Now, if you are a game store, if you're in Argos Anonymous's position, you are in a lot of trouble um, because basically you put all your money into what you thought would be a great set, a great game. It was, now, I remember watching, he made a video about positivity, uh, negativity. And at that point, you can tell that he was very stressed out because the game was not doing well. These sales were way down. And you cannot base a company on just a few different sales, right? You need growth. You need more players. You need more collectors. Whatever you need, you need it. And I think Argos is finding out. I know that he was supposed to sell his cards. But I, I imagine, so I don't think Rudy, I don't think Rudy lost money. I would probably guess Rudy made north of $10 million dollars. If I had to guess based on how much his promos, even the very last promo set, if you go on eBay right now, they still sell for $50, $60 a promo. That card costs maybe one-tenth of a cent to print. The Rudy Crown Eater, if you can sell it for $50, $60, hey, that's really good, right? And you can move some of your more or less dead product. Why wouldn't you do that? So Argos, I feel kind of bad from him. For him, uh, he's not able to show his face anymore online. It's uh, a terrible thing to do. It's a terrible place to be, right? Uh, he was supposed to open his new store, uh, his cafe, and they were going to sell some Meta Zoo. I'm sure that idea has probably changed significantly since the Meta Zoo bankruptcy. And he did buy a lot of Hello Kitty stuff. I don't know if he was able to flip it. And this is kind of my concern about this. Is Rudy is a flipper. He doesn't care about these games. He doesn't play these games. He's a pair flipper. I think Argos was actually half a flipper and half a collector. And that's who's getting hosed. The flippers don't get hosed because they never hold the product long enough for it to be a risk. And that's one way you can do it. And that's, again, another thing that I wish Rudy would tell you. If you are just a flipper, you're fine. Because if you flip a $40 box for $820 a box, you're gonna make, you're making 20 plus X a box. Some boxes you're making 40 X, right? That's a really, really good income. That's I mean, I, I, that's incredible margins considering it's a TCG card game. Pokemon does not even have one one hundredth of the margins that Rudy was doing when he was doing MetaZoo Nightfall First Edition. The other thing that I would probably say is really a little strange and something where it is a interesting topic to discuss is the business models themselves. I don't think they have long to last. I think Rudy understands this. I think Argos understands this. Like MetaZoo was directly selling to its customers via pre-orders. They cut out the middleman, so the middleman in MetaZoo, they only have their own promos to sell, like ask, catch them, catch them all collectibles, and so on. It's sad to really think about where MetaZoo was and is today, because that's the only differentiating thing was he had MetaZoo had promos, uh, all everybody had promos of themselves, and they were trying to. It reminds me of 
like a real estate company, everyone's got like a nice little promo card of themselves, right? And whoever gets the best card, which would be Alpha Investment, can make the sale because they have the best looking card, right? Or their most valuable card. A lot of what is truly, you know, wrong with MetaZoo stems from the hype. Uh, if you believed in the hype and you really believed in it, you lost a considerable amount of money. Now, if you thought that this was interesting, but it was fake, and that's why I think Alpha Investments was. I think he's smart enough to know that this was a scam from the get-go, and it is a scam. There's no other way to define it. It's a scam uh, when people do pre-orders, and those pre-orders don't get fulfilled. And then you get a letter from the bankruptcy court saying, oops, uh, sorry guys, we owe you money, but uh, we're in bankruptcy court. Good luck. I mean, how can you not say that's a scam? You took pre or you took the you took their money, knowing that at that point in time you probably couldn't deliver the product. Right? It's the same with Clutch Cards. It was the exact same. It's the same song and dance, song and dance, different verse. Right? So I I do think that in the long run, people are going to find that Meadow Zoo will have tremendous impact on how people do business in the future. Um, it already kind of does. And people who are thinking of, you know, opening these stores or being a distributor for this, they're going to, the risk is really high with these new card games. I mean, you look at Argos Anonymous, I would not be surprised if that dude, that dude cannot, he's not a wealthy individual, right? He, he's not a wealthy individual. How do I know that? I know that. And I, I mean, he he's not like in the retirement age. He's not the... He doesn't own a business, right? I, I don't know what he actually does or maybe I should go watch. Maybe someone can let me know what his actual job is. But for me, I have a law firm. I have a marketing agency. If I lose a card shop, it's just one of my free businesses. I can pay out everyone and then some. Uh, when we had to close down our card shop to help my employees, I gave them $5,000 a bonus. Uh, so, you know, in, in terms of like the severance, right? Here's five thousand uh, dollars. Sorry, you know we it didn't work out. You know I made some promises like, oh hey, we're gonna, and that that was my condolences for not being able to keep the company upright like I thought it would be. So I paid out all my employees five thousand uh, dollars when my game store went under because I had money. The marketing agency was doing really well. The marketing agency is ramping up like crazy right now. I think it's Donald Trump. The only time the marketing agency has ramped up this fast was when Donald Trump was uh, president, was first president. So there's like an initial period where people are drawn. So if you ever watch my other content, you know exactly why the law understood content, why that's probably happening. Argos doesn't have that type of money, man, to fail. Most people do not. 99.99%, uh, a catastrophic, like a Rudy $1 million loss to him is nothing. To Argos Anonymous, it's his whole life. And that's why I feel bad. Bye, guys.